Hey, and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman. I'm the pastor of Valley Christian Fellowship in Longview, Washington. And today we're jumping right back into our story with Jesus and Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Now, yesterday we looked at the first eight verses, and we saw that Jesus is approached by Nicodemus, this Pharisee, this religious leader. He, he's approached in the middle of the night, and, uh, and he says, you know, we know you're from God because no one can do the signs that you do unless they're from God. He kind of has this open-ended statement, and then Jesus now begins to explain to Nicodemus that if Nicodemus wants to see the kingdom of God, he must be born again. Now, Jesus, he is calling Nicodemus to believe in Jesus. He's calling G Nicodemus to believe in the true identity of Jesus. But Nicodemus is resistant. Nicodemus says, oh, I, what do I got to crawl back into my, my mother's womb? And Jesus says, no, you must be born again. You must be born of water and spirit. You must be, the theological term is regenerated. Well, Jesus ended yesterday and we saw that he says that, you know, the, the wind blows wherever it wishes. So the spirit of God does whatever it wishes. This reminds us that, that the Spirit of God has to work on our dead souls to bring us into spiritual life. We must be born again by the work of God, not by what we decide to do, but by God's work. Well, let's jump into to, uh, the next passage then, starting in verse 9. And, uh, and really, Jesus is going to aim Nicodemus at trusting in, in Christ. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? How does it work that the Spirit blows where it wishes like the wind does? Jesus answered him, verse 10, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, we bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. Jesus is saying, I I'm laying it out before you. I know what I know. You're not receiving it. Verse 12, If I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe. How can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? He says, I, I'm using this example of the wind. This is an earthly thing that you should be able to understand, <clears throat> yet you don't. He, you're a teacher? <laughs> you're a teacher and you don't understand these things? Verse 13, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Jesus is speaking of himself here. Now look at this next verse. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. This is how it all works. This is what Jesus is trying to call Nicodemus to believe, to believe in Jesus as the Son of Man. And he, he uses this, this scriptural explanation, this illustration that the Nicodemus has to know Numbers chapter 21, this is the issue. You have the people grumbling. Numbers 21, starting in verse 5. Let me tell you the story. It says, And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food, what God has provided already. Verse 6, Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. In their grumbling, in their, in their complaining, in their lack of contentment, in their lack of gratitude, God disciplines them with fiery serpents. They come and they bite the people and, and it causes people to die. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. This is strange. What, why is God having people look at a serpent on a pole to be healed of this snake bite? So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. What is going on here? Well, the Lord is setting a pattern in place. He is preparing He's preparing these people for, uh, for this statement. Jesus' words, John 3, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. 
Jesus is taking this example in, in Israel's history and he's saying just like that pole, that serpent was lifted up on that pole and people who experienced the curse of their sin could live, that actually is pointing to me. Jesus says, I am going to be lifted up and whoever looks to me in faith, though they're under the curse of their sin, they will live. They'll have eternal life. I mean, this is tomorrow, you, you know, John 3, 16 is our next text. You can anticipate that. But this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying, Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you don't need your self-righteousness. You don't need your position in the Sanhedrin or as your identity as a Pharisee. You need to look to me, the Son of Man. You need to look to me so you can be saved, so that you can have eternal life. This is the point that Jesus is making, and this is what Nicodemus is. He's unwilling to do you. He's unwilling to trust in the Christ. He, he's willing, unwilling to trust in the death and resurrection of Jesus. See, this calls us to, pro, to, to kill our pride. This calls us to a place of humility where we're no longer self-reliant, but we're relying on Christ. Where we're no longer relying on the flesh, but relying on the Spirit. Have you done this? Is your hope built on your ability to be good enough? Maybe you haven't done major sins like other people have. Maybe you have a sense of pride and a sense of entitlement before the Lord. Lord, look what I've done. No, you must be born again. The Spirit must work in you. You must humble yourself and look upon the Lord Jesus and not upon your own works. You must be born again. This is what Jesus is, this is what he's wrestling with Nicodemus to believe. And this is what he is calling you to believe. To believe in a bloody, crucified Messiah who died for your sins and rose again. This ancient way for our modern day, it's simply this call to trust in Christ. This is the point of John's gospel. Remember, he, he writes these things that you might believe in the Son of God and you might have life in his name. I've asked it before, I'm going to ask it again. Have you trusted in Christ? Have you looked upon Christ? Have you placed your faith in his death on your behalf? This is what we're called to do. This is the very core of our, of our faith. This is all of what our salvation rests upon. This is our ancient way for our modern day.